like to have a conversation with you about the word try and to challenge you to eliminate it from your vocabulary. Here's why. One day in the seventh grade, this dude named Raul yelled at me. He yelled, hey you, tall girl, why aren't you on my basketball court? I'd better see you there at 3.30. This was across the crowded school lobby and I was the new girl. Raul was a high school gym teacher. He also coached basketball, volleyball, and track. He was an exuberant white guy amongst the shy, brown, native kids. He had wild curly hair, this bushy mustache, and these blue eyes that went wider and wider the more excited that he got. I was a new kid. I was rather tall for a Pueblo Indian girl, thanks to dad's Sioux Indian heritage. I think what Raul saw in me, though, was not so much a tall asset for his basketball team, but rather a sad, shy, avoidant young girl. Stepping onto his basketball court went against every instinct and emotion that I was feeling that day. Raul asked me to step onto his basketball court, and on that day, I did not say, I'll try to be there. Raul's offer did not include the choice of try. Be there or don't be there. I could have gone home and that would have been okay too. You see, at that point, life had kind of been a mess. We had been living in South Dakota. We had moved there from California. We were living on my dad's reservation in South Dakota. We had been there for two years. One night, my mom decided that she was gonna leave him. She packed us four kids up in her truck and she drove us to New Mexico to her reservation. We were a bewildered mess. We had witnessed domestic violence, alcoholism, abuse of all sorts, poverty. My mom had attempted suicide on two occasions and one night my dad had flipped out and he had held us at gunpoint. All of these were situations that potentially could have screwed me up. So how is it that I'm standing here before you today as a physician, a mom, a wife, a surfer? Against many odds, I'm standing up here before you today. Because I gave up the idea of trying and I embraced doing or not doing. In my line of work, I see a lot of students who come in to my office and sometimes through no fault of their own, they've developed maladaptive patterns of behavior. I can't tell you how many times I've heard them say, I'm gonna try and change. Parents, I hear from parents too. I also do nutritional counseling because some of the medications that I prescribe and some of the medical conditions that come through the door Tend, people tend to gain weight or it messes with the metabolism. Sometimes I even prescribe exercise. Of those students who tell me I'm gonna try and change, for the majority of them, there is no change. I also hear about school. I hear about school a lot. One quarter, you're doing really well. The next quarter, your grades have slipped to Ds. And now you gotta tell your parents, you gotta tell teachers, your principal, your guidance counselor, probably even the school police officer, they're in your business wanting to know what happened. And you gotta tell them how your grades went down and how you're gonna prevent it from happening again. How many of you have said, I'm gonna try and do better? Or how about those of you who know people who smoke? How many times have you heard them say, I'm gonna try and quit. Or what about the weight loss wormhole? I'm gonna try and lose 20 pounds. I'm gonna try and eat healthier. I'm gonna try and go to the gym more. Once the words, I'm gonna try, come out of your mouth, it means for most of us that you're not committed. It means that in your heart, in your head, in your gut, 
wherever motivation is born for you, that you're not committed to the goal. It means that you're going to go three days without eating junk food. And then on the fourth day, you're going to devour that box of Thin Mints. And then you can say, well, I tried. And go back to the same patterns that got you there in the first place. To try has many layers of possibility. For some, it means that you are committed to the goal. For others, it means that the first failure that you run into, that's your end. You've achieved your goal of trying, and you haven't even come close to your stated goal. I want to do a little mental exercise with everybody. I want you to think of something that you'd like to achieve or a goal. It can be something fun, something small, it can be something serious. And you can do this in your head or you can say it out loud. So on the count of three, I want you to say whatever it is that you have in your head, I am going to try to blank, whatever it is, okay? One, two, three. I am going to try to... Awesome. <laughs> Now, I want you to say it without the word try. I want you to say it in the affirmative. I am going to blank on the count of three. One, two, three. I am going to. <laughs> By saying it with the word try, that may remain a dream. By saying it without the word try, it becomes an achievable goal, followed by action steps and a set of problem-solving skills. It also means that failure becomes okay. By committing to a risk or an opportunity and doing or don't doing, failure becomes a real possibility. If you try, you eliminate the possibility of real failure, or at least you kind of dilute the pain of it. So, it's okay to fail. Failure becomes okay. I've had no share of bombs. I failed USMLE Step 1. That stands for the United States Medical Licensing Exam, Step 1. There's four steps to it. You take your first step after your second year of medical school, Part two comes after your fourth year of medical school. Part three comes after your first year of internship. And part four, after your residency. Then you're ready to take your boards to become board certified as a physician. It's a long process. And I failed part one. Failure has taught me how to handle disappointment in constructive ways. And it's taught me how to reassess and morph my goals, as well as how to rebound and how to reboot. Now I want you guys to imagine yourself on a surfboard out in heavy seas. You're sitting there looking out at the horizon and you're seeing these waves coming at you that appear to be as big as houses. You spin on your surfboard, you lay down and you start paddling for one. At that moment, you have to make a decision. You have to commit or not commit. You have to do or do not. In surfing, there is no try. You decide to take the wave or you can pull back on your surfboard or back over the lip. It's perfectly okay to pull back. It's perfectly okay to not take the risk or the opportunity because sometimes it just doesn't feel right. Just stop saying that I'm gonna try when you know in your head or your heart or your gut that you're just not there. Or how about this one? People are hounding you to change something. They want you to make better grades. They want you to keep your room clean. They want you to be healthier. Or they want you to stop smoking weed. It's not your goal, yet you keep promising others, I'm gonna try. Instead, be honest. Tell them, I'm not ready to stop smoking. 
I'm not ready to change my eating habits. I'm not, I'm not going to be bringing my grades up because I don't know how. Sometimes our heads are not in the right place to make the change to commit. Sometimes we just don't have the right resources or the right information. Anxiety can play a huge role in indecision. Also, if you've had a history of failures, you have an innate need to kind of protect yourself from the pain of further failure. What I'm challenging you to do today, if you know you're not there, to stop saying, I'm gonna try. Instead, take some time and assess why you're not there. Tackle those obstacles in order to get yourself to the place where you can commit. So this mortifying experience I had with Raul in the seventh grade, it was a gift. He taught me to stop trying. By stepping onto his basketball court, I was performing an action of doing. Every step along the way to the current position that I'm in right now, I've committed. I've had failures. I've also had a lot of successes. And it's not because I'm anything special. I'm not a genius. I'm not super talented. It's because I know how to recognize an opportunity. I know how to take a risk. I know how to commit. I've learned how to take action steps. I've learned how to problem solve and how to rebound from failure and how to assess and morph my goals along the way. All of you are capable of doing this. I urge you to start today. You will achieve not only success in the goals that you set, you will also achieve success at learning how to rebound from failure, learning how to handle disappointment, and honing your problem solving skills. Just stop trying. Thank you. Yeah.